Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We are interested in proving this binomial coefficient identity. Summation k from 1 to n minus 1. n is an integer greater than or equal to 2. n choose k. k to the k minus 1. n minus k to the power n minus k. We need to show that this is equal to n to the power n minus n to the power n minus 1. We need first to prove the identity that summation k from 0 to v, v choose k minus 1 to the power v minus k, x plus k to the power v minus 1. This summation is equal to 0. And to prove this sum, we need the difference operator. The difference operator, big delta, if applied to the function f of x, gives us f of x plus 1 minus f of x. So here our main interest is a forward difference operator. And the step we are making is 1. Delta f of x is equal to f of x plus 1 minus f of x. What if we apply the difference operator again? So we will denote this by big delta squared f of x, which means that we apply delta to delta f of x. This will give us this function here with x replaced by x plus 1. So we get f of x plus 2 minus f of x plus 1 minus the function itself. f of x plus 1 minus f of x. Applying the difference operator twice, we get f of x plus 2 minus 2 f of x plus 1 plus f of x. Note the coefficients 1 minus 2 and 1. This is 2 choose 0, this is minus 2 choose 1, and this is 2 choose 2. If we apply the difference operator for a third time, we get this expression here with x replaced by x plus 1. This is f of x plus 3 minus 2 f of x plus 2 plus f of x plus 1. Then we subtract this quantity here to get minus f of x plus 2 plus 2 f of x plus 1 minus f of x. All in all, we have f of x plus 3 minus 3 f of x plus 2 plus 3 f of x plus 1 minus f of x. The coefficients are 1 minus 3, 3 minus 1. 3 choose 0 minus 3 choose 1. 3 choose 2 minus 3 choose 3. We can investigate more to reach the conclusion that applying the difference operator j times to f of x is summation k from 0 to j, j choose k minus 1 to the power j minus k times f of x plus k. This result is already established for the small values of j. To complete the proof by induction, we will assume that this is true, and we will try to establish this result for the case in which the difference operator is applied j plus 1 times. In other words, we will show that the difference operator applied to f of x j plus 1 times is given by a summation that looks like this, but with j replaced by j plus 1. Applying the difference operator to f of x j plus 1 times is equivalent to applying the difference operator once to f of x after applying the difference operator j times to it. By assumption, this is given by this summation here. We need to apply the difference operator one more time. The difference operator is linear. And when it is applied to f of x plus k, the result is f of x plus k plus 1 minus f of x plus k. Let's split the sum into two sums. One sum has f of x plus 1 plus k, and the other has f of x plus k. In the first sum, replace k by k minus 1. The summation now is k from 1 to j plus 1. The binomial coefficient is j choose k minus 1. Then we have minus 1 to the power j minus k plus 1. And when this k is replaced by k minus 1, we get f of x plus k. From this summation, separate the term corresponding to k equal to j plus 1. This is j choose j, which is 1, minus 1 to the power 0, which is 1. Then f of x plus j plus 1. We have f of x plus j plus 1. From this summation, separate the term corresponding to k equal to 0. This is j choose 0, that's 1, minus 1 to the power j minus 0, so we have minus 1 to the power j, then f of x. Taking this minus sign into account, we have minus minus 1 to the power j times f of x. After doing the separation of these two terms, the summation is from 1 to j. We have f of x plus k minus 1 to the power j minus k plus 1, then j choose k minus 1. We have a minus sign here. The term here is minus 1 to the j minus k, and we have here minus 1 to the j minus k plus 1, so we have here a plus sign, and then the binomial coefficient, j choose k. This is the fundamental recurrence relation for the binomial coefficients. If we add j choose k plus j choose k minus 1, we get j plus 1 choose k. These two terms can be joined back to the sum so that the index is from 0 to j plus 1. Our starting point was the assumption 
that applying the difference operator g times to f of x is given by summation k from 0 to g, g choose k minus 1 to the power g minus k, f of x plus k. Assuming that this is true, we have shown that applying the difference operator to f of x, g plus 1 times is given by the same sum, but with g replaced by g plus 1. This summation here can be verified for g equal 1, as we have done earlier. So by induction, this is indeed the effect of applying the difference operator g times to f of x. What happens when we apply the difference operator to a polynomial? Suppose that f of x is equal to x cubed. Applying the difference operator once, we get x plus 1 cubed minus x cubed. x plus 1 cubed is x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1. These two terms go away, and we are left with 3x squared plus 3x plus 1. It's a quadratic rather than cubic. Applying the difference operator reduces the degree of the polynomial from 3 to 2. If we apply the difference operator twice to x cubed, this means that we apply it once to 3x squared plus 3x plus 1. This is 3x plus 1 squared plus 3x plus 1 plus 1 minus 3x squared minus 3x minus 1. 3 times x plus 1 squared minus 3x squared. This is 6x plus 3. 3x plus 3 minus 3x. That's 3. Plus 1 minus 1, 0. The result is 6x plus 6. We started with the quadratic. Now we have a linear function. If we apply the difference operator 3 times to x cubed, we get 6x plus 1 plus 6 minus 6x minus 6. This gives us the constant 6. If we apply the difference operator 4 times, we have 6 minus 6, which is equal to 0. If our function is a polynomial, every application of the difference operator reduces the degree by 1. If we start with a polynomial with degree j, if we apply the difference operator j plus 1 times, we get 0. If f of x is a polynomial of degree m, where x of m has coefficient am, applying the difference operator means that we get am x plus 1 to the power m minus am x to the power m. When we expand this, x to the power m is cancelled. The differencing operator applied v times to x to the v minus 1 gives us 0. On the previous page, we have seen that delta applied to f of x v times is summation k from 0 to v. v choose k minus 1 to the power v minus k f of x plus k. If f of x is equal to x to the power v minus 1, f of x plus k becomes x plus k to the power v minus 1. This identity is true for every v greater than or equal to 1. Our next step is Abel's binomial identity. We have this function of alpha and beta. These are real numbers, but alpha is non-zero. Epsi of alpha and beta is given by alpha times summation k from 0 to n, and it shows k alpha plus k to the k minus 1 times beta minus k to the n minus k. We want to prove that this summation here is equal to alpha plus beta to the power n. In this bracket, Add and subtract alpha, we get alpha plus beta minus alpha plus k, all raised to the power n minus k. Then expand, expansion is summation v from 0 to n minus k, n minus k choose v, alpha plus beta to the power n minus k minus v, then minus between brackets alpha plus k to the power v. The next step is to replace v by v minus k. The lower limit of this sum becomes k, and the upper limit becomes n minus k plus k, which is n. Every v here is replaced by v minus k. We have a double sum, summation k from 0 to n, and then another summation from k to n. We have two binomial coefficients, n choose k, and n minus k choose n minus v. By writing down each binomial coefficient explicitly in terms of the factorials, we can show that this product here is n choose v times v choose k. n choose k is n factorial over k factorial n minus k factorial, this binomial coefficient is n minus k factorial over v minus k factorial n minus v factorial. This goes with that. We can multiply and divide by v factorial. n factorial with v factorial and n minus v factorial, that's n choose v. Then we have v factorial together with k factorial and v minus k factorial, that's v choose k. This product here can be replaced by the product of n choose v, v choose k. We will also interchange the order of summation. Here we are summing k from 0 to n. v is from k, so the index v is k or more. v goes all the way to n. 
we can make the outer sum with the index V. Note that the full range of V is from zero to N. The inner sum is indexed by K. K is less than or equal to V. This summation is from zero to V. After doing these steps, epsilon of alpha and beta becomes alpha, summation V from zero to N, K from zero to V. Then we have the binomial coefficients, N choose V, V choose K, and the other terms are alpha plus beta to the N minus V, minus one to the V minus K, alpha plus K to the V minus one. This inner sum here is very interesting. Summation k from 0 to v, v choose k, minus 1 to the power v minus k, and then we have alpha plus k to the v minus 1. This is the difference operator applied to the function alpha to the power v minus 1 v times. And because this is a polynomial of degree v minus 1, the application of the difference operator v times yields 0 for every positive integer v. Thus, from our previous result, the summand here is equal to zero for every value of integer v that is positive. The only surviving term corresponds to v equal to zero. Epsilon of alpha and beta is equal to alpha n choose zero, which is equal to one, alpha plus beta to the power n minus zero. When v is equal to zero, zero choose zero, that's one, minus one to the zero, that's one. K is zero. Here we have alpha to the power v minus one, and v is zero. This is alpha to the minus one. Alpha times its multiplicative inverse, that's one. We obtain our desired result that epsilon of alpha and beta is equal to alpha plus beta to the power n. Recall that the objective in this video is to prove that the sum k from one to n minus one, n choose k, k to the power k minus one, n minus k to the power n minus k. This sum is equal to n to the n minus n to the n minus one. How can we employ this function to get our desired result. A visual inspection tells us that we need to set beta equal to n and alpha equal to zero. But we cannot set alpha equal to zero. We have this alpha here, and if we set it equal to zero, we will get zero. To be able to get our result, we will set beta equal to n, but we will take the limit as alpha tends to zero, as we will see on the next page. From the summation of epsilon of alpha and beta, Isolate the terms corresponding to k equal 0 and k equal n. Now our sum is from 1 to n minus 1. When k is equal to 0 or n, the binomial coefficient is equal to 1. When k is 0, we get 1 over alpha from here times alpha, that's 1. And from this bracket, we get beta to the power n. When k is equal to n, the power here is 0. And here is n minus 1. Then we have this alpha. Set beta equal to n we get n to the power n, this beta minus k becomes n minus k. The left hand side becomes alpha plus n to the power n. This is equal to n to the n plus alpha, alpha plus n to the n minus one plus alpha times the sum. Move these two terms to the left hand side, then divide both sides by alpha. Take the limit as alpha tends to zero. On the right hand side, we don't have a problem. When alpha tends to zero, this alpha will disappear. We get summation k from 1 to n minus 1, and it choose k, k to the k minus 1, n minus k to the n minus k. That's exactly the sum we are interested in. What about the left-hand side? We can split this into limit as alpha tends to 0, alpha plus n to the power n minus n to the n divided by alpha, minus limit as alpha tends to 0, alpha plus n to the power n minus 1. This is not problematic. As alpha tends to 0, the limit is n to the power n minus one. Here, if we put alpha equal to zero, we get n to the n minus n to the n in the numerator, and then alpha is zero in the denominator, that's a zero over zero situation. So to obtain the limit, we can apply L'Hopital's rule. The limit is the limit of the ratio of the first derivatives. The first derivative of alpha in the denominator is one. Upstairs in the numerator, when we differentiate with respect to alpha, we get n, times alpha plus n to the power n minus one. Now we can set alpha equal to zero. And when alpha is set to zero, we get n times n to the power n minus one, that's n to the power n. So this limit is n to the power n, that limit is n to the power n minus one. And that's our result. The summation of interest is equal to this difference here, which can also be written as n to the n minus one between brackets n minus one.